the 2016 Love Life Women's Conference, September 29th through October 1st. So go on, girl, register today. This morning, I want to talk to you about not being offended by trouble. Not being offended at God because your life hasn't turned out the way you thought it should or you had a rough beginning or you didn't get to go to college or you didn't get the raise you wanted or you've wanted a child and you haven't had one yet or you've been believing to be married for 25 years and you're still single and whatever the case might be. Trials can make us bitter, but they don't have to. They can actually turn out to make us better because a lot of the Bible that we know is just theory until we have to put it to practice in our lives. And when you have to put it to practice, then you really get to know God. You don't just know about God, but you get to know God in a deeper way than what you can ever possibly imagine. Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 14. Therefore the sower sows the word. The ones along the path are those who have the word sown in their hearts, but when they hear... Satan comes at once and by force takes away the message which is sown in them. It's good to come and hear the word, but it's even better if you take that word with you and you keep it in your heart and you meditate on it and meditate on it. But it's very like Satan the minute you leave to throw something at you that's going to distract you and get your mind off of what you just almost learned <laughs> to make sure you don't really learn it and begin to apply it to your life. The ones along the path are those who, when they have the word sown in their heart, Satan comes at once. Satan is alive and well on planet earth and he's out there trying to make sure that we don't grow spiritually. Amen. He's not happy you're here, but if you're going to be here, he'd like for you not to get anything out of it. And they have no real root in themselves. Everybody say root. root. And so they endure for a little while. And then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, they immediately are, what? Offended. They become displeased, indignant, resentful, and they stumble and fall away. Now, every one of those words are very interesting words. Resentment, offense, indignant. You know, that indignation is just a little well shouldn't be happening to me. Why is this happening to me? It's amazing how we're okay if things are happening to everybody else. They should trust God. Well, just trust God. But when it happens to us, well, how? I don't know, know why this is happening to me. And well, we got to be very careful about the thing of, well, God, I go to church every week and I tithe and I pray and I do this and that. Can I tell you something? God doesn't owe us anything. Amen? That's just the truth. If we all got what we deserved, we'd be in serious trouble. <laughs> and they stumble and they fall away. They stumble and they fall away. You see, the definition of offense means that it's a stumbling block and it will cause you to fall away. In other words, if you get offense in your heart, then you can no longer grow spiritually. And if you're not growing, see, in God's kingdom, there's no such thing as being static. You're either going forward or you're going to drift backwards. You got to keep going forward or you're going to drift backwards. You got to use what you've learned or pretty soon it will become dormant on the inside of you. Love has to flow in order for it to really be love. Love comes in from God. It's got to go out to other people. It comes in. It's got to go out. This is an active religion. <laughs> We're to participate and be active. The other definition of the word offense that I read and talked about a lot last night, very interesting, it says it's the part of the trap on which the bait hung that lured the victim, the animal victim, into the trap. So let me just say that, that offense, being offended, whether you're offended at somebody else or whether you're offended by trouble you're having, or tonight we're going to talk about not offending yourself, and that's going to be an interesting message for all of us. 
Some of you think, what, why in the world would I offend myself? Well, you're going to find out. <laughs> Resentment makes us bitter. Resentment is an inner attitude that basically says, I am offended that this is happening to me. And who are we offended at? Well, we can either be offended at God, and you know, most people are not going to outright say, I'm mad at God. But I can guarantee you, as sweet as you all are, and as amazing as it is that you wanted to come to the house of God on a Friday morning, we have some people, hopefully not many, but some people sitting here today, and when this goes on TV, a whole lot more, that are even using trouble that you've had in your life as an excuse not to believe in God. You know, the biggest majority of people that won't believe, they won't believe because they can't, they can't balance out in their mind a God who loves us with the suffering that we see all around the world. Well, suffering is not God's fault. Man did it, not God. God created a world where everything would be wonderful. Didn't last very long, but that was his goal and desire. And he's in the process now of trying to restore that. And so we're going to have issues in the world. We're going to have things that we have to go through. And we can't be getting mad at God because everything in our life doesn't go the way that, that it should. The best time in the world to trust God is when you have trouble. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just some sermon you hear or a few scriptures you've underlined in, in your Bible. Trust God. I'm writing a book right now on trusting God, and I tell you what, after 40 years of being in the Word, I'm convinced that that simple little two-word thing, trust God, is the answer to every single problem that you have. <laughs> Everything. Everything. But in order to do that, you've got to believe that God is good. The devil's bad. God's good. And even if God doesn't get us out of something that we know he could get us out of, he lets us stay in it longer than we think we should, we trust God that he's got a plan that's bigger than ours and that ultimately he will not only work a good thing in us, but he will bring us to even a better place in life because we didn't give up on him going through problems. Don't get mad at God because he hasn't given you a soft, cushy, comfortable, sweet life. Now, sometimes, too, and I want to talk about this for a minute. Sometimes when we're having trouble, we kind of get offended at other people who are being blessed. And we can even get a little self-righteous attitude. Well, I'm a better Christian than you are. I mean, I, I do this and that, and you do blah, 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 you know. Self-righteousness is a sneaky, wicked thing. I actually had to repent twice in the last two weeks <laughs> for being self-righteous. And I just thank God for his conviction, but it was, it was over a situation that somebody that I know sinned, and it was a pretty serious thing, and man... I had to sit on myself to not just keep thinking about, I, can you believe, I just can't believe that. I mean, I would never, I would never, I would never. And boy, that's when you got to back off and say, but for the grace of God, there go I. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't deal with things in people's lives and help them come through to repentance and restoration, but we, we dare not start thinking that we're better than somebody else and are, are like in this case of, well, why, are, why am I having trouble and you're not? You just need to leave all that alone. Let me ask you a question. How do you behave when God doesn't pick you? You wanted to be the worship leader, and you didn't even get picked as a backup singer. Matter of fact, they had the audacity to ask you if you'd like to make sure all the worship people have water. Wow. Well, that's a test, isn't it? So you can do what? Get offended. Get self-righteous. 
really hurt yourself spiritually or you can trust God. If this is where you want me right now, God, I'm going to serve with a smile on my face. And I know if you want to put me somewhere else, you're the only one that can do it in the right time. Let's think about a few situations in the Bible that just amaze me. You know, God made a covenant with a man named Noah. Noah built the ark, did everything that God asked him to do. When the earth flooded and it was time for Noah to come out of the ark, God said, I'm going to make a covenant with you. This will never happen again in the earth. The, earth. the whole earth will never be destroyed again with the flood. And I'm going to set this rainbow, this beautiful rainbow in the sky as a promise to you that every time it rains, you see that rainbow and you know, no need to worry. God's not going to destroy the earth. Well, Abraham, a few chapters later, he's a man who makes a covenant with God. God said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to make you wealthy, and you're going to have land, and blah, blah, blah. And this is what I want you to do is your part. Go circumcise yourself. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but when I get circumcision and somebody else gets rainbows, I'm not real happy about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just say it, you know. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, don't misunderstand this, but God hasn't been just real easy on me. I mean, I don't just get a bunch of like miracle deliverances. No, not me. I have to walk them out. And that used to just aggravate me because I would see all these other people, well, you yeah, yeah, yeah. But I understand fully now why God made me walk the path that he made me walk because he wants me to really understand and relate experientially to what people are going through so I can give them hope in their battles that they'll make it. So listen to me. Sometimes God will let you go through something that doesn't make any sense at all to you expressly for the purpose of using you in that area to bring other people through to freedom at a later time in your life. There's a lot of stuff in the world that I don't understand, but I do. I've made my mind up to this. God is good, and I trust him. God is good, and I'm going to trust him. Amen? Another example in the Bible, two sisters, Rachel and Leah, now, Rachel was the beautiful, wonderful, desirable sister. The Bible says it real nice. It says, Leah had dull, weak eyes. <laughs> that basically means that she was the ugly sister. <laughs> well... Leah got the man, and Rachel had to watch for seven years. Then Rachel got in on it, and Jacob married her too. They got to do multiples back then. I, for the life of me, can't imagine why anybody would want more than one of these. I, <laughs> I, no, thank you. And... Uh, Having children was extremely important to them. Rachel's womb was shut up and she couldn't get pregnant, but Leah just had one kid after another one after another one after another one. And so by studying that, I kind of learned something interesting. See, Leah wasn't the most beautiful one, but she got the guy first and she got the kids. Rachel was gorgeous she got the guy second, and finally, after many years of watching Leah have babies, she finally had a child. Everybody gets something, and everybody doesn't get something. So you have something that somebody else doesn't have, so there's no point in getting jealous of what they have that you don't have because you have something they don't have. Amen? And I can't imagine what it was like for the disciples. You know, Peter, James, and John seemed to be, have a little different position with Jesus than the rest of the guys. Now, I don't know about you, but that would have probably been annoying to me. And, you know, those were the three that got to go up on the Mount of Transfiguration. 
and the other guys had to wait at the bottom of the mountain. Now, I'm quite sure that those three guys were not so spiritual that they came down and just didn't want to make the other guys feel bad, so they didn't say nothing at all about what they saw. I bet they came down, you will not believe. <laughs> you would not believe what we saw up there. So can I just tell you, if you ever want to have any peace in your life, do not compare your blessings or your trials with other people's blessings or their trials. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 15. This is a very good scripture that really shows us the, the problem that resentment can be if we don't catch it early. Exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another to see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace, his unmerited favor and spiritual blessing in order that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment and many become contaminated and defiled by it. I love that scripture. He's saying, look, if, if you let, like, like for example, I was bitter and resentful and had all kinds of bad attitudes because my father had sexually abused me. Well, a lot of them were just buried down deep in me and they were affecting my relationships, affecting my attitudes, affecting the way I thought. They were affecting every area of my life. But you see, I thought because I left home when I was 18 that I didn't have the problem anymore. But the thing was, I took the problem with me in my soul. And so there's an inner work that needs to be done in us that only Jesus can do. Well, because I had that root of resentment in my life, that was affecting my marriage. It was affecting my children. It was affecting all my relationships. It was affecting my daily life. So just like this scripture says, if you don't get it stopped, it's going to just spread and it's going to affect every area of your life. And some of you, if you really will take to heart what I'm saying this morning, this can be life-changing for you. Don't live your life bitter and resentful and full of hatred and bitterness over something that happened to you that you cannot do anything about, but God can if you'll let him do it. Now, the Bible actually tells us, God had the audacity to tell us that trials actually are good for us and we should get excited about them. <laughs> it's amazing how spiritual we can be when everything's good and how we can resurrect that old man when things aren't so good. God wants us to be stable, 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 stable going to talk about stability for a minute. I was so unstable in the earlier years of my life. I never knew how I was going to behave till the devil told me. <laughs> if he said I was depressed, I was depressed. If he said I was mad, I was mad. I didn't know anything at all about controlling my emotions. I just did whatever I felt like doing. Well, you know, emotions can be good sometimes, but they can really be dangerous because you never know when they're going to come and when they're going to go. And you have to make sure the right ones are guiding your life. i particularly fond of Psalm 94, 12, and 13. So let's take a look at that. Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man whom you discipline and instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law. Okay, so this is saying that when God is disciplining you, you are blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. That you may give him power to keep himself calm in the days of adversity until the inevitable pit of corruption is dug for the wicked. So this is saying God is going to continue to deal with us and deal with us and deal with us and deal with us. And part of that means that he is going to let you get in some uncomfortable situations that are going to bring hopefully the best out of you. But 
I don't know where you're at. I mean, the Bible says in James 1 that trials bring out patience. Well, they brought a lot of stuff out of me before we ever got to patience. <laughs> I mean, like nasty stuff. And it took about 25 years for me to get stable. <laughs> now, I don't know if any of you are as slow as me, but it took me, oh, there's one lady, two. <laughs> right. Got a few out there. You know, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. You'd think we could learn a little faster than what we do. If God gives you a test and you don't pass it, you get to take it again. <laughs> and again, and again, and again, and again. Until you pass it. God will keep letting us deal with stuff and deal with stuff and deal with stuff. And these are not things that are going to, they don't even really get into the category of real suffering. I mean, these are just uncomfortable, irritating things, just stuff, things that happen. People say something that hurts our feelings. We didn't get the promotion we wanted at work. We didn't get to sing in the choir, you know, whatever the case might be. My goodness, if we can't even deal with that kind of stuff, what are we going to do if things get really difficult? And he said, this is going to keep on uh, that you, that God would give us power to keep ourselves calm in the day of adversity. Everybody said, I have to learn to keep myself calm. <laughs> you didn't sound excited. I'd like you to do it again. <laughs> I have to learn to keep myself calm. Second Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 3. These are awesome scriptures. For the time is coming when people will not tolerate or endure sound and wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing <laughs> and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors that they hold. Verse 4, and they will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off into myths and man-made fiction. Verse 5, but as for you, now he's talking to Timothy, who's a preacher of the word. As for you, be calm and cool and steady. <laughs> And suffer unflinchingly every hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fully perform all the duties of your ministry. Now, here it really gets good. Verse 6, Paul says, For I am already about to be sacrificed. My life is about to be poured out as a drink offering. The time of my spirit's release from the body is at hand, and I will soon be free. I, well, I'm more excited about that than you are, I think. But, I mean, I get what he's saying. He's saying, look, being here in this earth, in the times we're living in, and trying to serve God in this fleshly body, it is not always easy. It's not always comfortable. It doesn't always feel good. But boy, the day is going to come when our job here will be done and we'll get a release from this body and we will be totally and completely free. And can I tell you something? That's when life begins. Well, it's very important for each of us to make a decision to do what's right even while the right thing is not yet happening to us. 1 Peter 2.23 says, When they hurled their insults at Jesus, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, and I love this, he trusted himself to him who judges justly. That's such a good scripture. Matter of fact, I love the latter part of that scripture so much I had it done in calligraphy, and I have it up on my wall. The Amplified actually says that he trusted himself and everything to him who judges fairly. You know what? Your circumstances might not be fair, but God is a God of justice, and that means that he always makes wrong things right. It may take time, but he always makes wrong things right when we put our trust in him. And so today we're offering you four CDs on understanding your triggers, the things that the enemy uses to get you angry and upset, 
and learn how to avoid the trap of offense. There's so many things in the world that we can get upset about and worried about and frustrated about and angry about, but none of that does us any good. The only thing that does any good is putting our trust in God. And then also a book called Worry Free Living, and I don't know how we couldn't all want that. And you know, I'm, I hopefully and prayerfully you enjoy the program. So many people tell us they watch the program every day. But let me just ask you a question without pressuring you. I don't mean it to pressure you. Have you given or do you give on a regular basis to help cover the cost of the program? You know, the gospel is free, but the pipeline that carries it is not free. And it's very expensive to be on television, but the Word of God is helping people all over the globe. God's given us a privilege of being on television worldwide. And I need your help to not only continue bringing you the show that you enjoy, but also to help us reach out to people around the world. So give a really generous offering today to help us with the costs of TV. God bless you and thank you. Have you forgotten what it's like to live in peace? You don't have to any longer. Joyce shares how to trust God and receive His peace in her book, Worry-Free Living. And to help you explore root causes that may hinder you from living a peaceful life, we're including Joyce's four-part CD series on understanding your triggers and avoiding the trap of offense. Don't waste another day worrying. Make it your goal to start walking in God's peace today. This combo package that includes both Joyce's book, Worry-Free Living, and her four-part audio series, Understanding Your Triggers and Avoiding the Trap of Offense, is yours for a donation of $30 or more.